Hi. Today we're looking at the typical powering for an elevator and elevator shaft and the control room when dealing with an elevator that is controlled by a motor up top and the controller for that. So, um, yeah, so, and you, that recently this seems like what I've been doing a lot. There are different ways that, that, you know, this is done, but typically, you know, you have an elevator panel. It can be in the control room. It can be downstairs. It can be, you know, outside of the control room, but there's an elevator panel and this is an emergency panel. And what I mean by emergency panel is that it goes to this, the, the feed to this panel goes to an ATS, which is an automatic transfer switch. And in the ATS, you got a, uh, normal line coming in and then you got an emergency line coming in from the generator and then the load the loads going out to this in typical you know building operation the uh it should be fed you know off the normal line coming from the switch gear so got the power to the elevator panel and usually you know i i i, I separated a switch right here for the controller and this right here is a shunt trip, a, a, a shunt trip uh, disconnect. I, you can have the, the actual shunt chip trip breaker inside the panel, but I just wanted to separate this. So the shunt trip, it, it, it's, it's being fed from here, goes down to the controller, and then from the controller to the motor that moves the elevator cab up and down the shaft. So the shunt trip, it trips out when there's a heat detector. Well, actually, there's two heat detectors and two tip smoke detect yeah, smoke detectors typically, and they're on the top of the shaft and the bottom of the shaft, and they're typically really, really close to the sprinkler head. Um, I believe we usually put them about 18 inches away from the head, both the smoke and the heat. What happens is if there's a lot of heat inside of this, you know, the heat detector goes off, it's going to send a signal to the shunt trip breaker, and that shunt trip breaker is going to open up, causing it to shut down because there's, you know, fire or something, something that's, you know, causing a safety hazard inside of that shaft. Um, so, also inside of these control rooms, you, ha you typically have disconnects for your motor controllers, and then you'll have disconnects for your cab lights. The cab lights, um, that's being fed usually not from the elevator panel, not, not the elevator panel that's controlling the cab itself. It's usually fed, what I've seen a lot, I mean, it like this all varies from, from building to building. I'm just giving you a general idea right now, but usually there's a, a dedicated panel just for the cab lights themselves you'll have the elevator cab light panel and then you'll have you know the elevator cab panel itself so inside of this room you'll have the cab lights and the main disconnect for the controller inside of the shaft like I said you're, you're gonna have a heat detector on the top of the shaft and on the bottom of the shaft and there's going to be usually a sprinkler head on the top and the bottom. It varies from, you know, different jurisdictions. So you'd have to check with, you know, the authority having jurisdiction. And the fire marshal and, you know, there's quite a few people you'd have to check with to make sure that you are compliant. But, so here's the cab lights inside of the, the elevator cab. And usually there's a GFI on the top of the shaft. And usually there's a GFI on the bottom of the shaft. When installing these smoke and heat detectors, the GFI 
and the light that illuminates the the elevator shaft you're going to have to get with the elevator contractor and he's going to have to tell you where you can put that um usually it's you know once he's got all of his you know his rails up and everything else because uh you don't want to you know install it and then have to move it so usually that's like once he's got his elevator up and going that's when you'll start installing your lights your heat and smoke detectors and your gfi and you know typically in these in these shafts the lights you might hit did, 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 what i drew out here is just a three level elevator shaft and usually you'll have a switch you might have a switch at the top and, a, and at the bottom this one i just drew a switch on the bottom and it controls two lights one on the one on the shaft or one on the pit and one on the top of the shaft and then like i said you'll have another heat and smoke at the bottom of the um at the bottom of the pit and then a gfi and then usually there's a sump pump and this can have a controller itself or it can just, you know, it can just be wired to a disconnect. It all depends on the, you know, what the, uh, what the job specs are calling for. But usually you'll have three panels involved. You'll have the elevator panel. That's going to be an emergency panel. You're going to have an elevator cab light panel. That is going to be another emergency panel. And then you're just going to have a general emergency panel. And usually what I've seen goes to these general emergency panels. It's just like the GFI and the shaft lights for the, um, you know, for the shaft itself. And then the uh, sump pump. I didn't, I didn't write that down. But what happens is, is that usually if, you know, like one of these uh, smoker heat detectors goes off. Uh, it'll send the elevator into recall and usually it's you know whatever they'll, they'll send this elevator cab whatever floor is you know with the fire marshal determined to be the quickest way out of the building typically ground floor so if this uh, smoke detector started uh, detecting smoke inside of the shaft it would send the elevator into recall and then you can safely exit the building and then, uh, like I said, the uh, heat detector, that goes to the uh, shunt trip breaker, and that will shunt everything out. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.